Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I have committed my life to serving him. I am coming here to do, uh, this is titled Matthew Part 6. We will be going through the sixth, the sixth chapter of Matthew. I'm reading out of a uh, New King James Version Bible. This is a Jeremiah Study Bible. If you can, let me open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I glorify your name, lifting you over all things. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I thank you, God, for being such a powerful God. Thank you for sparing my life so long as to I can come and do these videos, Lord God. Thank you for not destroying my sin, destroying me in my sin, but having mercy upon me and giving me time to come to repentance so that I may serve you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Wash me clean so that I may be acceptable in your sight. Fill me with your Spirit so that I may accurately teach your word as you see fit. I pray and ask all these things in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so chapter 6 opens up with do good to please God. Alright. Chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward for your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may, be, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you that they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. The first thing that comes to mind when I, uh, when I read this passage is, I have a Facebook account, all right? I might as well throw it out here. I have a Facebook, I have an Instagram, I have a, uh, I do have a Twitter, I don't use it. I have a Snapchat. My Snapchat, my Instagram is Rich Boy Special. All right, one word, R-I-C-H-B-O-Y-S-P-E-C-I-A-L. All right, my Facebook is Richard Ross. Uh, uh, so yeah, follow me on these social media sites if you want to. Okay. But so I got this Facebook account and uh, it's been a, a quite a few times where I see people going out to uh, do a charitable deed such as to feed the poor or give some uh, guy clothes, some poor guy clothes or something like this and, and they're recording it and they're like, oh yeah, I'm out here, you know, helping the poor, you know, this is what you should be doing type of thing and I'm not knocking them, okay, that's fine that you're going out and helping the poor and that it's better to be doing it and recording it to not be than to not be doing it at all. But what Christ is saying here is, uh, don't do your good deeds so that uh, you're rewarded by a man, by mankind. So somebody can say, oh, that's a swell of a job you did there kind of deal. I mean, what is that anyway at the end of the day? What is a person's recognition at the end of the day? All right. You know, here in this earthly realm, we can't even take that to the bank with us. You can't take that to the bank. Oh, go to the bank and tell them to give you a loan for a uh, for for a mortgage, uh, for a, uh, take out a mortgage on a house based on the good deeds that you've done for men. You know, uh, they're not going to give you a loan based on that. Uh, and, and that's 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 the earthly system now. In the heavenly system, you know. Uh, 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 how are you going to get a reward from God for, you know, and you're seeking your reward from men type of deal. Okay. All man's rewards are in bandy. All right. So in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 26, Jesus says, What profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Jesus is saying here, hey, listen. If you obtain the entire world, everything that is in it, all the riches, wealth, gold, diamonds, everything in it, but lost your soul, 
what profit would you have? You know what I'm saying? So, so try this on for size. What can a man give you for doing a charitable deed? What can your Facebook followers give you for witnessing you doing a charitable deed? Uh, what if they gave you the entire world? Is, is, is that what you're seeking? Really, what is your heart set on? What is your desire? Type of deal. Okay, 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 okay. Cause, 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 cause mankind, all right, they got, they got, they got uh, 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 things out here. They got cults out here where you can sell your soul for a whole lot of money. Okay, 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 okay. So, 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 is that what you're in this thing for? Is your, are you in this thing for money? Now, that kind of doesn't make a lot of sense because you wouldn't do a charitable deed if you're really in this thing for money. So, what's your MO? Uh, uh, for the glory of man, be careful because glory is supposed to go to God. Okay? Now, you might say, okay, I'm going to go out and do a, a video and put it on Facebook of me helping the poor and giving glory to God. Well, are you really giving glory to God? What Christ is saying here, hey, listen, uh, uh, if you really want to glorify God, do it in secret. So the God, God that sees you in secret will reward you openly. Alright. Alright. That's what it says, right? Mm hmm But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Our soul belongs to God, okay? Our soul belongs to God and no one can take uh, uh, us out of God's hands. Christ has redeemed our soul and he wants us to live our life and live life more abundantly except on his time and and not on our own time. Alright. Uh, there's a slight disconnect I'm having here between okay how'd you get from charity to, to talking about uh, 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 what a man would give in exchange, what profit is it to a man uh, if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Well, the connection between these things are uh, 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 the, reward, the rewards of a man versus the rewards of God. Okay? Now, man, the, a godless man only sees this world and what this world has to offer it. Remember a second ago I was just talking about cults and how they can give they'll give you money to sell your soul and all these things and be a devil worshiper or a demon worshiper and all of this. Well man says, hey listen, I can give you stuff right here, right now. I can give you things that you want. Only I want you to do this. I want you to turn your back on God because he's not really there anyway, right? And just worship this demon. Just serve the devil, whatever. Just, just sell me your soul. I'm going to give you all of this money. And I'm going to give you all of this stuff that you can enjoy now. Only just turn your back on, on God. And that's the purpose of this verse. Uh, Matthew 16, 26. Uh, uh, what profit is it a man to, 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 to... For what profit is it to a man that he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? All right. All right, I got another uh, verse here for you, Matthew 10, uh, verses 27 through 30. And, and this is just to let you know that uh, 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 we are Christ and we belong to Christ. When we confess Christ as our Lord and Savior with a trusted, committed belief, there is no one that can take us out of Christ's hands. Okay, Matthew 10, 27 through 30, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So, uh, 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 we belong to Christ. Our, our soul belongs to Christ, okay? Our soul uh, is redeemed by Christ. We belong to God, and no one can take us out of God's hands. How, how can we trade that for some kind of a, 
a worldly perishable good. It, it, it's it, it's not a fair trade. Okay, uh, um, we can flip that verse. Matthew chapter 16 verse 26, I'm going to read again, bear with me because I'm going to flip it and I'm going to give you the polar opposite of it, just for, uh, just food for thought. Okay, so Matthew 16, 26, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? If we were to, if we were to flip that to its polar opposite, it would read, what debt is it to a man if he gives all that he has to the poor and commits his soul to Christ? Okay? The answer to this is none. There, there, there's no debt, but there is a great profit in, in doing so. Okay? Uh, uh, man would have you believe uh, 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 that, that, that God is non-existent and uh, uh, to do these things, sell your soul, turn your back on God, receive all this money, enjoy this life, sin, fornication, debauchery, y'all, just live it up while we can and after we die, that's it. That's what man would have you believe, but that's a lie. That's a trick of the enemy, that, that the man that believes that has been deceived, okay? The actual, what, what's really going on here is we're supposed to be living the life obedient to Christ and not, and and not only will Christ bless us in this life but in the life to come in the life to come we we inherit eternal life okay okay all right mark chapter 10 verse 29 Jesus says whoever gives up many things for the sake of 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 uh, uh, me or the gospel will receive 100 times as much in this life and in the next Okay, okay, okay. Christ saying he's going to take care of us anyway. Christ saying in this life and in the next life, whatever whatever you give up uh, uh, on this earth for my sake or for the sake of the gospel, you will receive 100 times as much, whatever it is that you give up for the sake. Some people might say, okay, what is it that I can give, that I might give up for the sake of the gospel? It might be your career. You know, it might be your career. Uh, uh, it, it, it might be a spouse. Yeah, it might be a spouse. It might be, it might be children. Might have to walk away from children for the sake of the gospel. There's many things that that may conflict with the gospel. You see, everybody is not on the same program that Christ is on. Okay, uh, the, 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 the path to knowledge and wisdom is a very narrow path. Okay, okay. Uh, uh. Narrow is the gate that leads into life. You know what I mean? And uh, and there, it's narrow and it's difficult. That means it's hard to find the the path to life, the path to really following Christ and being obedient to God. Uh, uh, th this path is hard to find, and once you find it, it's very difficult to walk it. Okay? And 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 I can I can uh, 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 tell you from experience, this is true. You know, it's very difficult to continue on this path, especially in this world. The world is slanted against uh, uh, a believer in Christ, whereas, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's like everything's contrary to it in this world. You know, the world says, chase money, uh, uh, pile it up, you know, consider yourself first, uh, 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 and I'm getting a little ahead, but, but, but Christ says, you know, uh, uh, you can't serve God in money. Christ says, uh, uh, do for uh, think of others more than you think of yourself. You know, it's, it's, this world is contrary to, uh, to, to, to what Christ says in that. And uh, let me move forward here. Let me move forward here, please. All right, I got to stay on track. Okay, the model prayer. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you that they have their reward. But you, when you go and pray, excuse me, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard 
by their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. I'm going to pause for a second here because I want to uh, insert, something, insert something here. Uh, it's, I want to talk about a thing that's called corporate prayer. If you go to any typical Christian church or any typical Christian home, you will most likely bump into what is referred to as corporate prayer, meaning uh, there will be one person praying, usually it may be a couple people praying, but let's just for, let's say there will usually be one person pr praying out loud, but the, uh, uh, the, those in attendance are also praying with this person um, 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 under, the, under the sound of the voice. So, for example, I'd be, let's say I'm in this room full with people and I say, let's, let's go before the Lord in prayer. And I, I pray out loud and everyone else will bow their head and, you know, be in like prayer form or what have you. And I pray to God uh, being, acting as the voice of everyone in the room, okay? That's called a, a corporate prayer. And that's not, uh, it's not frowned upon. It's actually uh, encouraged. I believe it's Paul who encouraged us to pray uh, corporate prayers. Now... Um, um, uh, 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 corporate prayers is okay. I found I went and found an example uh, from the book of John when Jesus actually did a corporate prayer. Okay, uh, this is when he was uh, raising Lazarus from the dead. Okay, uh, so in John chapter eleven verses forty one through forty two, Jesus uh, prayed this corporate prayer. He said, "Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I." know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus himself prayed a corporate prayer, so even though he tells us to, that when we pray to go into a room and shut the door and that, he's not saying never do a corporate prayer, but you know, uh, uh, corporate prayer should not be the only prayer that we pray. It should maybe be, you know, Three and the three percent of the prayers that we pray. If we pray ninety, uh, okay, so we got a hundred percent of time of the time we pray, right? Ninety-seven percent of that time we pray should be in a room somewhere with the door closed, praying to God in secret. All right, and I say corporate prayer can take up that other three percent there uh, type of deal. That shouldn't be the only way a person prays. And let me say this, because when I began first began. Uh, uh, well, I was, I was more or less raised in the church, but when I really began to get serious with my walk with God, you know, uh, 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 I, I was led by the example of the church. And most of my prayers only happened when I was praying in church, when I was uh, in the midst of these corporate prayers. Sometimes these corporate prayers are the only prayers people get. And I'll tell you this, it's better to have a corporate prayer working on your behalf than to have nothing, no prayer working on your behalf, okay? All right, let's be careful not to shame those that are in uh, leadership within the churches that pray and do these things. We don't, we're, we're given authority, okay, uh, to, to, uh, 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 to, 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 to judge someone who, who teaches the word of God, uh, this is found in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20, if you like to go and read it. But there, Jesus gives us the authority to judge someone who stands in leadership to uh, teach the word of God, somebody like me, okay? This judgment should be based on uh, uh, if they are really about God's business, if they are truly representing the kingdom of heaven, if they are truly committed to and focused on establishing and, and building and contributing to the kingdom of heaven, or do they have some kind of interior motive going on here? Jesus tells us we will know them by their fruit, and by their fruit means uh, 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 their actions and what they do in their day-to-day uh, -day life. And this would be a good time for me to say, uh, I encourage you all to 
all attend a good Bible-based church and, and not to let Bible literacy videos, sermons, and anything like it, don't let these things uh, discourage you from attending church, okay? And this is one of the reasons. You want to be able to go and look at those people who are in leadership and observe them and see uh, 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 how they're carrying themselves and that, and if possible, maybe even have some kind of a general relationship with those uh people teaching the word so you can get a better feel if they're really about God's business or is it just a, a, a hoax or a front. You don't want some guy teaching you the word of God and then when he leaves the church he goes home and slaps his wife and, 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 and drinks a fifth of alcohol. I mean this ain't the type of people you want to be learning from. You'd be better off learning on your own type of deal, okay? Alright, alright. Well, be careful about that judgment thing because the judgment should only go so far as to say, hey, should I be learning from them or should I not be learning from them? To go any farther, you bring yourself into judgment. Because in that same Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through, uh, what's that, uh, 6, Jesus tells us not to judge. Okay? Alright? Alright? Okay. So, uh, yeah, moving forward here. Alright, uh, so Jesus goes into the Lord's Prayer, and this Lord's Prayer, if you will, it is a, a template for how we should pray. Okay, what's the template? Have you ever filled out a resume? Have you ever went on the computer and did a resume, alright? And when you, you pull up like a resume wizard or whatever you call it, and it gives you a template for uh, uh filling out a resume. It'll say insert name here, insert experience here, insert qualifications here, insert extra skills here, insert references here type of thing. It's a template for how you would fill out your resume so so you have some kind of a general idea on how to compose that thing. Okay? Okay? And, and Jesus gives us a template here because you know uh, uh, we don't know God how 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 Christ knows uh, knows God. Okay, uh, uh, and before giving us this Lord's prayer, Jesus says, "Hey, look, I'm gonna tell you something about God. He know what you gonna pray for even before you pray for it. So so you know when you pray, pray like this, and He gives us this 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 template. All right, all right. And that's a powerful thing to know that God God knows what we want before we even ask for it. I mean." I mean, goodness gracious, that means you don't really have to go in such great detail trying to explain and everything like God already knows. All we have to do is let our requests be made known unto God. Uh, what does that scripture say? Be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer, thanksgiving, and supplication. <clears throat> supplication, let your requests be made known unto God, and he will give you... Uh, the peace that passes all understanding and will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. I might have jacked that verse up a little bit, but I'll put it up here on the screen to help me out. Alright. Alright, so going forward into this template of the uh of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we start off by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be your name. The definition of hallowed is greatly revered or respected. So we're saying our Father in heaven, greatly, greatly respected and revered is your name. Your kingdom come. What, what kingdom? The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven? We're saying, Lord, let all of uh, let your let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. We're saying, hey God, as you do things in heaven, let your will also be done on earth. Here, I'm in full submission to, to whatever it is that you would have done here. Let your will be done. Let the kingdom of heaven come as you see fit. Let it be orchestrated as you see fit. You see, sometimes things happen in this life. Sometimes death happens. Sometimes pain and suffering happens. Some kind of time, sometimes things happen that are very uncomfortable and we go to God and say, why God, why? Make these things stop happening. Make this go away. But, but what Christ is saying here is, hey, look, come what may, 
Come hell or high water, rain, sleet, or snow, Lord. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come as you see fit. Because I don't understand everything that you have in place. So I don't understand everything that's going on. I don't understand why people got to die. I don't understand why I have to suffer, Lord. But I know this, that, that, that your will be done. Here right now on earth as it is in heaven, where whatever needs to be done, God, just let it happen. Because I know that when your kingdom comes, Lord, it'll all be worth it. Okay? Okay? That's what this thing, that's what Christ is saying here. Alright? Uh, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, 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 it can be referred, that can be referring to uh, food because we all need to eat. Alright? There, there's, there's, there's poor countries out here. Uh, and even in America, there's people starving. There's people starving all over the world, okay? And Christ feeds us. And I can give my personal testimony. When I was down and out and, and had no food, didn't know where my next meal was coming from, the Lord fed me from his hand to my mouth. Not literally from his hand, but the Lord made sure I had food to eat, you know? So when I say my prayers from time to time, I really do remember that. And I, I appreciate and I thank God for keeping me. And he still keeps me now. Just because I got a couple dollars in my pocket to buy my food don't mean that it ain't God that's giving me that money to buy my food. He kept me through all the years from my low lows to my high highs. You know, I, I got to give all the glory to God. All right. Uh, and the daily bread also uh, can be referring to the word of God. Okay. Jesus said, I have food that you do not know about. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, 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 type of deal. You know what I'm saying? He talking, he, 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 he talking about, uh, fellowshipping with God and that it's, it's food for our soul to nurture our relationship with God through prayer, through, through studying his word, through, uh, fellowshipping with other believers and, and, and through, uh, witnessing to unbelievers. This is food for our soul and strength for our body. When we do these things, we are we can be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, which nurtures our body with strength, strengthens us with strength that we didn't have otherwise or won't have otherwise type of deal. It's, it's a powerful thing. It's better to exercise the Holy Spirit of God within you than to not uh, uh, exercise the Holy Spirit of God of God that's uh, within you. Okay. Uh, uh. And forgive us our debts. Uh, this uh, verse 12, chapter 6. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Well, God is a forgiving God. Okay, okay, okay. Christ came to this earth to live a perfect life, uh, to, to be falsely accused, nailed on a cross, and die, buried in the grave, uh, bearing all the sins of, our, uh, uh, of the world. Okay, uh, bearing all the sins of the world on him, so and, and got up from the grave with all power in his hands, redeeming everyone that would believe that he is Christ, that he is the Son of God. Uh, 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 Christ sent his Son to do that for us because he he forgives us. G God forgives us so much that 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 he sent his Son to die for us to 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 really to 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 really. Write it in stone our forgiveness. Our for, we're forgiven. Whatever it is that you've done, yeah, you might have to suffer some in this life, you know what I'm saying? Because the consequences for sin don't always go away. But I tell you what, you are forgiven of your sins because if you believe in Christ because he bore those sins on the cross. He didn't bore some of them or a few of them. He bore all the sins. So we're forgiven. So in the same way that we're forgiven so graciously, we should forgive other people because if we say, oh, I don't forgive you for doing this little wrong. I don't forgive you for doing that little wrong. No, that wrong is too big. It's too massive. It affected me too much for me to forgive that. I can't forgive that. Well, I tell you something. You deserve what happened to you. You was born in this earth a sinner. You lived a sinful life. And from now to the point where you die, you're going to sin again. And you're going to keep sinning. Even if you try your best not to, just like me, we're all sinners. This is why Christ came and died for us. You understand what I'm saying? So you being a sinner saying that you too good to forgive somebody that, uh, 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 that, 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 that sinned against you when Christ was perfect. But 
went ahead and forgave the entire world of their sins. You know what I'm saying? So you better than Christ. That's what you're telling me? You better than Christ because you can't, you too good to forgive somebody of the sin because the sin was too wrong when you were sinning yourself. Man, get that out of here. If you want to be forgiven, you got to forgive. You can't accept the blood of Christ and condemn somebody else. It doesn't work like that. For you to be forgiven, you got to forgive. Uh, 6 verse 13 and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one this verse can get uh, this, this do not let a man do not let a man say when he is tempted that that God tempts him for a man is drawn away by his own lust, which gives birth to sin, and sin in its purest form gives birth to death. I know I jacked that verse up, but here's it again uh, on the screen to help me out here. Uh, type of deal. So, 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 so that seems contrary to what this said because it says, "And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one." So one verse says. Uh, the verse that I just read says, God, please don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And this other verse says, don't say that God leads you into temptation in the first place at all, because God don't lead you into temptation. All right, all right, all right. I'd say a better interpretation for Matthew 13 would read, do not allow us to be led into temptation but deliver us from the evil one because God's perfect in, in, in everything that he does and let's uh, God so, so, so God can't do wrong right that's what sovereign means anything that God does is, uh, is, is, is good okay and let's say God decided to lead you into temptation what you gonna do condemn God if God want to lead you into temptation then he can lead you into temptation but God don't lead you in temptation. You see, even the evil, and there's a verse for this too, even the wicked is, is, is God's for his day of judge to use in his day of judgment. Okay, okay, okay. So God don't got to do nothing. He got people to do his dirty, to do dirty work when dirty work needs to be did. Okay. And a lot of times this dirty work happens. So as, as a counsel to us, so we can come to a point of repentance. Okay. So we can say, oh man, this situation is so jacked up, you know, I need help. I can't do this on my own. God help me. God forgive me. What do I need to do to be right? Type of deal. Okay, that's, that's why these things happen off the time. So we can come to repentance. So we can accept what Christ did for us. So we can inherit eternal life and, and not uh, face eternal condemnation. Okay, okay. So uh, 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 whatever temptation that happens, you know, it's, it's, it's out of the kindness of God's heart that he even allows it to happen. You know what I mean? Because uh 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 this is a verse for this too. God uh uh he corrects the his children whom he loves. You know what I'm saying? It was the verse count it all joy when we face uh these type of issues because uh God cor God corrects uh the the, the 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 people we love. Okay? Alright, there's a verse again for you. Okay. But deliver us from the evil one. Uh, we should pray hedges of, tape of protection around us, like in the book of Job. All right, all right. Uh, 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 Satan couldn't harm Job because he had boundaries of protection. Satan said he has boundaries of boundaries of protection on every side around him, so that Satan couldn't get to him. Okay, okay. We should pray for these. Uh, 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 hedges of protections or boundaries around us and boundaries around our families. We should pray for protection from the evil one. We cannot withstand the devil. On our, it's not even our fight in the first place. We don't know the the uh, uh, we we don't know, we don't know nothing about the, the 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 depths of spiritual warfare. Okay, we don't. Man, there's been times, and I don't want to get all into it. It's been times where I just I can just feel it in the air like. Like the uh, like an unclean spirit just around me, where it's just like, huh, you know, I kind of, you know, the blood of Jesus like cast it up off me. We don't understand what goes on. The best thing we can do 
is to pray for hedges protect protect me Lord keep me father from the evil one you know that's really the only thing and check this out can't no uh, unclean spirit snatch you up out of God's hand no way now they can tempt you to they can kind of beckon you to come along and come out it's like a, a person with a dollar on the string you might have a person imagine a man in a prison cell right and he got a dollar bill so he take this dollar bill and put this dollar bill on the string right and throw the dollar bill out the cell like like around the corner out the cell right so somebody that see him I say oh a dollar bill and go to pick it up and, and the dollar bill move and they say hey you know and go a little close hey so pull the dollar bill back and they keep chasing the dollar bill until they get too close to the jail cell and then the man grab you gotcha you know type of deal that's how evil spirit unclean spirits try to beckon us out of, outside of our hedges of protection you know what I'm saying and it might not be a dollar bill <laughs> it's kind of funny because it might be you know what I'm saying that what, what's the saying the root of uh, money is the root of all evil that's a scripture uh, uh, type of deal but 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 by money you can be beckoned outside of uh, uh, the will of God sexual immorality you know what I'm saying uh, uh, striving for power type of deal okay things like this all right all right, all right, but don't, don't, don't fall for the, for the trick. You know what I'm saying? Stay within your boundaries. Don't step outside into sin. You know what I'm saying? You leave yourself sus, subject to all kind of uh, uh, uncleanness. All right, I gotta get up out here. I got these people going to come to look at this car. I'll be back to, to finish this joint up. All right. Okay. But for yours is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. Amen. Alright. Let's not forget that who the kingdom belongs to in this whole thing. The, the kingdom is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus is ruler of the kingdom of heaven. God has placed everything in his, in his hand. Alright. Uh, all the power belongs to God. <clears throat> Whatever power that you see whatever power distribution uh, that you see going on even the the people that are acting within their own power this is power that has been given to us by God as a gift we have the gift of free will whereas we can go and do uh, what it is we want to do we can make a choice to even act against God but don't think that this power that we're exercising is our own it is the power that has been given to us all power belongs to god at any given second he can he can take his power back you know type of deal uh 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 uh, uh powers and principalities demonic forces angelic beings whatever have it be it as listen god is in the ultimate control of everything and all power is in his hands and, and, and Christ is telling us to, to tell God that we recognize this and we confirm this in our prayers not to, so, so that we're not act, uh, coming off as if we're acting under our own power. <clears throat> all right? And all glory belongs to God as well. In fact, this is what this, this, what this whole thing is about. God sent this Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins so we might believe uh, Christ is the Son of God that we may glorify God for all of eternity. All right, uh, 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 this is a, we're supposed to be glory machines, if you will. <clears throat> uh, let's take an engine for example, the engine in an automobile, or uh, really any engine that cycles gasoline. <clears throat> okay, uh, engines essentially are air pumps. Like the, 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 the displacement of an engine is saying how much air that that engine displaces, all right? General Motors makes a 3.8 liter engine. That's a very popular engine most people know about. Uh, 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 that engine displaces 3.8 liters of air, okay? Uh, uh, type of deal. Now, as Christians, we're supposed to be glory machines just how an engine is an air pump we're supposed to be glory pumps we're supposed to be sending glory up to God and Jesus is saying hey listen 
uh, uh, con conclude your prayers and glorifying God, letting God know that, hey, we haven't lost sight of the goal, that we're still, uh, uh, we're still seeking to glorify your name and, and asking you for whatever it is that we're asking for type of deal, all right? So don't forget to glorify God. Uh, I'll do it one time right now. Glory to your name, Heavenly Father. That's what we're supposed to be doing. If we can do everything except glorify God, we fall fallen short. Okay? Glorify God. Chapter 6, verse number 14. <clears throat> For if you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay, so Jesus has already concluded the template for how we should pray. But then he goes on and elaborates one more time. Hey, make sure that you forgive people that have wronged you uh, so, so God can forgive you. He puts an extra emphasis on it. He already said it in a prayer. Uh, chapter 6, verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. But then after the template is over, Jesus goes on and says in uh, 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 14, 6, 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive them their trespasses, God not going to forgive you. So, you know, it just is what it is. We got to forgive, okay? There's no... People do some really screwed up things in this world, but we got to forgive them. We have to forgive them. We have to. I mean, if we want to be forgiven, we got to forgive, you know. And, and, and let me say this. Anything bad that has happened to us uh, uh, is really short of what should have happened, okay. Because as sinners, okay, we deserve death. We deserve to die. We deserve eternal suffering as sinners, okay? That's what we deserve. But God is so good that he sent his son to pay that price for us so we don't have to suffer that. So, and by us accepting that and by us being forgiven, we also have to forgive, okay? Because if we can't, now if we can't forgive, then we inherit that thing that's called death. You know what I'm saying? Eternal separation from God. If we can't forgive someone, nor can we be forgiven. So, seeing that we deserve to die, whatever wrong has happened to us, we should probably, if we're still living, if you're living, you got breath in your lungs, you have the ability to forgive somebody. You still have that option, right? Now, if you were dead, you wouldn't have that option, okay? So, I say it's better than the, to, to forgive someone is better than the alternative of dying because that's exactly what's going to happen if we don't forgive and that's take that's just putting it in the wrong so whatever has happened you know and I, I don't mean to be insensitive or whatever pray ask for God for strength let them know you want to forgive but you need help whatever happens you know and it's not just mouth service it's something that happens within the heart because you know when you forgive somebody you really forgive them it's not you just saying yeah I forgive them but you hope they drop dead right then and up. You know what I mean? That's not really forgiveness, but forgiveness is saying, hey, listen, this person has done me wrong. I, I forget, not only do I forgive them, but I hope they have come to the part where they truly, genuinely accept Christ in their heart so that they are also forgiven uh, by the Lord, because my forgiveness doesn't mean nothing. I hope they're forgiven by God. Uh, 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 that, that they come to the point of repentance so they can be forgiven because they're already forgiven by God by the way Christ has already died for our sins all we got to do is believe on his name so when we truly forgive somebody we would hope that they also confess Christ in their hearts they, they, with the, they, they confess the Lord with a trusted committed belief so that they can also be forgiven so, so not only did I forgive them in that but I love them in that alright all right, going forward here. Matthew 6, uh, verse number 16. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to be fasting. For surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to, to men to be fasting, 
but to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. <clears throat> okay, what's the point of fasting? The uh, 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 the point of fasting or the re the reward for fasting is spiritual strength. Okay, spiritual strength is the the purpose of fasting. Okay, uh, uh, what is spiritual strength? The strength to do God's will without interruption, without stumbling. Uh, 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 the strength to overcome the temptations of sin and death. Okay, uh, uh, Jesus fasted all those days and nights before he uh, 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 began his ministry. Okay, he was preparing himself spiritually to overcome what needs to be overcome, even to the point of death, you know, Christ did, all right? For example, I did a fast before my, uh, before I got married uh, to my beautiful wife. I fasted, uh, 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 I was on a fast maybe about a month or so, so I forget the time period, but I was preparing myself spiritually for the, uh, for the commitment that uh, I was going to be making with my wife. I wanted. I was fast for this. I was fasting for the spiritual strength to be the husband that I should be. And I don't want to say like I was fasting like no food and no water. I I was fasting until I wouldn't eat anything until like three o'clock that day. I drink water in the morning, but I wouldn't eat anything until uh, in the afternoon. Whatever. Okay. Going forward. Uh, 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 the what is what is also another reward for <clears throat> fasting. Let me tone it down. Okay. Another reward for fasting is to exercise demons. When combined with prayer, fasting can help to exercise demons, can help to cast out a demon, uh, whether it's out of, uh, 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 and this is one thing that I don't know about the scripture. I guess it's open to interpretation. I won't say I don't know. It can be one or two ways. Uh, Jesus told his disciples that a specific type of demonic force can only go out of a person by prayer and fasting. Okay, so Jesus sent his disciples out to cast out demons, heal the sick, and that, and they came across a particular uh, 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 unclean spirit, if you will, that they could not cast out of a person. And they returned to Christ and said, Lord, we couldn't uh, cast out this uh, unclean spirit. What's going on? And Christ says, uh, uh, Christ cast the, th cast the unclean spirit out, and he told them, like, hey, this type only comes out by prayer and fasting. So I concluded that another reward of fasting is to exercise demons. All right. Now, whether it's the person that's possessed, whether they're the one that has to fast, or, or whether the person that's trying to cast a demon out of them have to fast is open to interpretation. I, I'd say it could work both ways, okay? Uh, but I'd say if a person is possessed by a demon, meaning they're not really in con full control of themselves, it might be hard to fast or whatever. All right. But it has to be combined with prayer, prayer and fasting. Okay, moving forward. Lay up treasures in heaven. Uh, that's chapter 6, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Okay. So what is this treasure that he's referring to? All right, we can uh, we can rationalize the tr storing up treasures on earth. We're talking about silver, gold, cash, you know, what, bank accounts, 401ks, uh, things of this nature. Now, Jesus isn't saying don't be, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, productive financially. There's nothing wrong with making money, but, you know, it's the love of money that's the root of all evil, not the uh, the money itself, if you will. Okay, 
uh, now, uh, okay, so that's, that's, that's earthly treasures. What is heavenly treasures? How can I store up heavenly treasures? What does that even look like? Okay, so, to save souls uh, uh, by spreading the gospel is a form of laying up treasure in heaven. By spreading the word of God to, sell, to tell someone about Christ and how Christ died for them, so that they will be forgiven of their sins if they will believe in him with a trusted, committed belief. If that person chooses to, chooses to believe and accepts Christ into their heart, you just store it up for yourself treasure in heaven. That's a uh, uh, that, that's treasure there. Okay. All right. Another way to store up treasure in heaven: charity and good deeds. All right. Just doing good things for people just for the sake of doing them, without looking for any recognition or anything. It's another way to. To, to store up treasure on heaven and on earth because you know uh, way back in Genesis God told Adam the ground is cursed for your sake thorns and thistles it will bring forth and, and by the sweat of your brow you will eat right so the ground is cursed for our sake but the ground is also blessed for our sake that's to say if we put it if we put bad into the earth we will get bad out of the earth okay and this isn't this isn't just talking about a uh, a uh, a harvest kind of thing, a planting, reaping, sowing kind of thing. No, this is literally. If I do bad things in the world, I'm gonna get bad things out of the world. If I do good deeds in the world, I'm gonna get good deeds out of the world. The 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 the, the earth is cursed for our sake, but it's also blessed for our sake. It's cursed for our sake because of whatever bad we get, we we distribute. We're gonna get it back. You're going to reap what you sow. You're going to pay the consequences for the wrongs that you do here and now on this earth. All right. And likewise, the good that we choose to do, we will also reap harvest for that in this in, in, in this life. If we go through this life doing all good, good deeds, good, taking care of this, we won't be able to stop the blessings from coming back to us. All right. It's just how it works. Ground is also a blessed for our sake. I hold on to the blessing part. I try to stay clear of the curse part. You know, I, I, I hope that I've... I've received all the punishment for the wrong that I've done already, and I try to be conscious, conscious enough to put forth good and not put forth any bad, because I most certainly don't want to hear that echo, no more. Okay, all right. Okay, what's another way to lay up treasures for 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 yourself in heaven? By creep by keeping Christ's teachings, John chapter eight verses thirty one through thirty two. If you are my disciples. If you if you keep my words, then you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. All right, all right. Okay, <clears throat> moving forward. Six twenty-two, the lamp of the body. All right, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay. 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 <clears throat> Why do you set your eyes on a particular thing? Why would I fix my eyes on a particular thing? Why would I take my eyes and look at a woman and say, Mm, that woman is beautiful. I'm lusting after her. Why would I? Why would I? Why would I? Why would I fix my eyes and say, "Look at this dude. I don't like this dude. I want to fight this dude. I want to cause this guy physical harm." Why would I do that? Why would I set my eyes and say, "Oh man, you see that person over there?" They, 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 they need something. They look like they're hungry. Let me see if I can help them in a very discreet way where I, I just want to bring them some kind of relief. Why would I say, you know what, I could do something this way, which is the wrong way, but I'm going to do it the right way. Nobody would know the difference. No one would catch me if I did wrong. But you know what, I just want to, I just want to try to do things the right way. Why would I do that? Why, why does a person do with it? Why does a person set their eyesight on a particular thing? Let me try to explain how this thing works. 
Okay, so the body, our physical body, is controlled by our mind, right? All right, let me give you an example. My mind is going to tell my body to raise my right hand. I'm going to tell my body to close my fist. I don't want to tell my body to put up my thumb. I don't want to tell my body to cross my hands. I don't want to tell my body to uh, stand on my tippy toes. Okay, so my mind tells my body what to do, okay? Where does my mind get its influence from? Okay, our mind is influenced by the spirit. Okay, now check this out. We have, we have uh, 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 our spirit, right? We have our spirit, the, the combination of our mind, our body, and our spirit that makes up our soul. Okay, okay? Now, and our spirit is relatively naive, if you will. Uh, you ever hear the saying, if you don't stand for nothing, you fall for anything? That kind of has some truth to it because uh, uh, our spirit, if we're not anchored in the Lord, that, that thing be blowing all kind of different directions. Okay, so check this out. We have our spirit, right? We have unclean spirits. An unclean spirit is a spirit that is contrary to the Word of God, okay? That, that influence our minds that has an impact on our behavior, what we do with our body, okay? Then we also have the Holy Spirit of God. Now, I'm not saying this in a way whereas there's a, 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 a like, like it's on a scale, like unclean spirits and the Holy Spirit of God. No, the unclean, the, the unclean spirits have nothing on the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit that Jesus had when he was on this earth doing all of these miracles and doing God's will and, and turning water into wine and casting out demons and walking on water and, and, and healing the sick. The, 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 that was the Holy, the Holy Spirit that descended on Christ and remained on him. Okay, that's the Holy Spirit of God. All right. So we have the all-powerful Holy Spirit of God. Okay, we have our naive spirit and we have unclean spirits. Now our body is influenced by all of these, our mind is influenced by these spirits. Okay, when influenced by unclean spirits, our mind tells our body to go down a path of uncleanness that leads to more uncleanness. Okay, check this out. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. How does your eye make your whole body be full of darkness? Because these unclean spirits has told my, my, my mind that it should go down this path that my eyes see. So I'm going to go down this path that my eyes see that's an unclean path and with my body and I'm going to participate in these unclean things, okay? And these unclean things are going to lead to more uncleanness and eventually death in this full-blown form. All right? Dang, I got somebody here. Oh. Okay, so, so that's what it's like when your eye is bad. When your eye is bad, uh, you're allowing yourself to be influenced by unclean spirits and using your eyes to take you down the path of uncleanness, that's, it, which leads to, 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 to great darkness. Um, now, when we, uh, when we yield to the Holy Spirit of God, okay, uh, 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 the Holy Spirit of God uh, uh, influences our minds to look for clean things, to look for heavenly things, to keep our minds fixed on he heavenly things. So that's the, uh, uh, the path that our body walks, which leads to more righteousness and more cleanness and more godliness and Christ-like character, okay? And this is how we're designed to be. We're designed for our bodies to operate in the light of the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? 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 Uh, 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 that's why the verse says, If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay? Okay? Uh, when a person walks in darkness, their rationale, their logic, uh, tells them that the darkness that they're walking in isn't necessarily darkness, but it's the right thing to do. So they have a false sense of light with, that is inside of them. 
Now, if we have an error in our pattern of thinking, in our way of life, that we consider is not an error, that makes that error an infinite error. That means that we, we would walk in sin without correcting it because we think there's no correction to be made. That's, that's a great darkness, a never-ending darkness. You know, all glory be to God uh, 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 through sending His Son, you know, to, to, to free us from this darkness so we can have access to, to the light, so we can walk in a way that we do not stumble. Proverbs says the evils, the evil stumble uh, and, and don't even know what they tripped over. You know what I'm saying? Thank God that we can uh, walk in the light. Okay. So, uh, let me say this. I put wrote these down. Unclean spirits produce unclean thoughts that produce unclean actions. All right? Such as a bad eye that in return leads the body into sin and death. All right? The Holy Spirit of God produces clean thoughts that produce clean action, actions, such as a good eye that in return leads the body into life, even eternal life, even eternal life. Now here's something that's important here. To so pick a side. What side are you going to be on? You want to walk in the light or you going to walk in the darkness? What side you want to be on? Uh, uh, so many people be half-stepping and, you know what I'm saying, not, not committing to, to, to this or that. Man, look. Jesus said in Revelation 3.16, So then, because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Man, check this out. Uh, 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 Jesus said, pick a side, okay? Uh, 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 it better you be all the way hot. It better you just, you know, turn your back on God completely uh, or, or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Then to say, okay, I believe, but, you know, I'm going to still walk in my sin. But I'm gonna believe, but I'm gonna still dibble dab. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I trust in God. But I'm gonna do these uh, 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 ungodly things. You walking with God, or you not walking with God? Do you, are you trusting God, or you not trusting God? Do you think that God, whatever God has to offer you, is enough to sustain you through this life, or you think you gotta, uh, 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 com you gotta accommodate yourself with other things? You know what I mean? Uh, what's, what, what's better to go down your path or uh, God path? Here's the thing. Walking with the Lord is kind of like this. It's like driving down the street and you're on this street, right? And this street is called Your Will. That's the street you on. And you get to a point where you at an intersection and the name of this street is God's Will. Now you're going to go, you're going to continue straight on your will or you're going to turn off on God's will and do that. You know what I'm saying? You can't ride on both streets at the same time. Which one are you going to do? You got folk over here trying to ride down the middle. No. You know what I'm saying? Christ said, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Luke 1. All right, moving forward. 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else you will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Uh, that mammon is money. You can't serve both God and money. What is your heart? What? What? What is, your, what is your heart focused on? Would you, rather, would you rather have Jesus or would you rather have finances? Would you rather have uh, financial compensation or would you rather walk with the Lord? Which one you want to do? You can't do both. Christ ain't saying, look, quit your day job and, 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 and never make a dollar again to follow him. That ain't what Christ's saying. It's what you're really committed to being doing. Would you walk away at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, would you abandon whatever your source of income is if it interfered with you serving the Lord? If it interfered with you living your life how Christ says live your life? Would you? Because I'm telling you, it's going to get to a point where it gets there in the, in the end days and we about rapidly approaching them. Whereas, you're going to have to put your money where your mouth is. Are you going to serve the Lord? Or are you going to make money? Which one is going to be? You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 you can't serve two masters. All right? I've, I've, I, I, I've made the choice that, 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 that if I can't serve both, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord first. And within living my life within the will of the Lord, 
if I can make money and take care of my family and responsibilities and even to the point of being able to do charity and things of this nature, you know, then so be it. But when it gets to a point that that money interferes with my relationship with God, you know, uh, that source of income is over. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, my God is first. It's the priority. You know what I'm saying? You can't put money above God on your priority list. It's got to be God. Okay? You know, all the money is God any, God's anyway. Everything belongs to God anyway. How can you say, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm choose the money, you know what I'm saying, and abandon God. And everything belongs to God. You know what I'm saying? It's like having a rich friend that owns all the property. You know what I'm saying? But you say, you say, oh, well, I'm going I'm to trade on this friend for this, little, for this little piece of land right here. When your friend owns everything anyway, you know what I'm saying? And by being his friend, you got access to everything anyway without limit. But you're going you're gonna to betray your friend for this small little piece of property. Well, it's the same thing. Everything, the whole world, the galaxies, time, space, matter, everything, spirits, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, everything belongs to God. You know what I'm saying? All the realms, everything, everything belongs to God. Okay? So, 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 so why don't we turn our back on him for money? Come on, man. All right, moving forward. <clears throat> Do not worry. Now, this joint right here. It ain't too much, but I can't say it no better than Christ about said it. So I'm just going to, chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature, can make yourself any taller? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Uh, so Solomon, Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived the uh whoever lived outside of Jesus Christ okay so so and Solomon used all of his knowledge and wisdom to acquire great wealth and 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 and, and great riches and people came from far and wide just to see what he had and to, to to hear from him you know what I'm saying he's a very wise man okay uh he built the temple for God uh uh, back in the day, David wanted to build the temple, but God was like, no, your son going to build it. That was Solomon. He built the temple, okay? Uh, 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 and uh, so, so, so this verse says, uh, uh, So why do you worry about your clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these, was, wasn't dressed like one of them. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things, the gen after all these things, the Gentiles see. The Gentiles, is, uh, they, they are the non-Jews. They didn't have the Old Testament law, uh, if you will. Okay? So it's kind of saying like, for after all these things the godless people seek, for, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and, all, and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about his own things. Sufficient for the day is his own troubles. <clears throat> Thank you guys for listening today. This concludes uh, Matthew chapter 6. I hope this was a blessing to you guys. Uh, 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 thanks for watching. Take, God bless. Take care.